Free agency is almost here, and we are going to get you prepared. We're going through all the top NFL free agents and making our predictions where we think they're going to go. You don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Tuesday, March 5th, the Fantasy Footballers back with you, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Hope you enjoyed a bonus episode of this show. We dropped a draft episode on Saturday morning. Sure did. Had a nice time. Jason was, uh, he did a live best ball draft and we commentated the draft itself and talked about uh, the picks he made and the picks that were being made throughout the draft and there were some surprises and uh, it was a good time, mm -hmm. but um, you Talk, know. Talked about how the, the, the tush push was not going to be changed and about how uh, Jason Kelsey had not yet officially retired. Right. Until now. Until now he did today. We'll see how well that tush gets pushed now. Yeah, no, that's actually a, we a good... We get to find out. That's a good point. Um, he might have been the secret sauce in all of that. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed that show. Make sure you're subscribed over on YouTube. That way you get the notifications if we drop something secret like that. Uh, go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer, subscribe, click the bell, make sure you are notified. And, uh, we do have a winner. Can I get like, a, Whoa. I need like a, an announcement sound, right? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that's, that's what we, we want. The, the trumpeters. Bo they, yeah, we got that. Ooh, that was almost in that was stereo. The, that was like the trumpeter combine. And they then are working. And then was that Jared Goff? Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the. The golf horn. <laughs> well, I thought we'd do we we probably have a horn without Jared Goff. I hit it. Yeah, that's so. the one I hit. The one oh, without okay. Goff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um congratulations to the winner of the listener league spot. Anybody that pre ordered the UDK before March first, uh actually up in th uh, up through the end of the day, March first, you were entered to win. And Jordan K. Jordan. Jordan K. Congratulations. You have won a listener league spot to come play with us. And uh, this is the first official, has, I guess the second official member, right? Has Jordan K. been messaged? No? All right. Well, let's message Jordan K. He will be by the time this show hits. Okay. The that, that's all That's all I meant was like if people, look, there's Jordans out there. Yeah. There's probably some Jordan K's out there. Yeah, so, and they're real excited. And one, one of them's a winner. Yeah, so we'll we'll send that message to you. But thank you to everybody that participated. Hopefully, you're enjoying the ultimate draft kit, the UDK Plus with the Dynasty Pass. We have a post combine update coming very soon. Uh, we had the NFL Combine this weekend, and that leads us into our quick question, which was like, what was the big takeaway for you about a specific player or a reaction you had? to the NFL players that did participate in the combine. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll start us off because I think it is the the headliner. Um, of It's not necessarily the most impactful, but it's always the most fun and the most watched event is the 40. And when the all-time NFL record for the 40-yard dash is beat, uh, that is the, 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 the most fun story. But... Uh, we're talking about uh, Xavier Worthy. He ran a four-two-one. We knew he was fast. Uh, he ran a four-two-five, and people were saying, "Hey, hey, hey, dude, you're good. Take the shoes off. Don't have a chance of having a worse one." He's like, "No, I want the record." Went back out there, beat the record, uh, ran a four-two-one. But his teammate Adonai Mitchell, uh, both the Texas uh, wide receivers. What was he four three five? I mean, and he's he's a big boy. So uh, those it the was, weight training program uh, for Texas is they're doing some good work. It was a very DK Metcalf 
comparable uh, run. Am I remembering yes. that right? Yep, you are. From a size uh, perspective, like that was one of the score. one of the fastest runs. They're very similar in size, and uh, I think Metcalf was four three five, and Mitchell was four three four or something like that. So uh, both Texas wideouts blazing. Really, the entire wide receiver class. I believe this is the fastest average. Um, you know, we talked. Uh, we've talked them up quite a while now about what a good wide receiver class this is. There is, you know, last year and for a couple of years, it's been a bunch of itty bitty baby boys, and we haven't really had the the classic X six foot to six two two hundred pound receiver archetype. And there's a handful of them this year. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was uh, Lad McConkey. He has been a a darling. Uh, a favorite in terms of, you know, he's been pretty high on my rookie board uh, even before the combine, but then he came out and uh, ran a four three four. Was it four? Was that? It was. I think it was a four three four. He ran a. I thought he was point one faster than Garrett Wilson was. Let's see. I'll I'll just double check. Double check that for me. It could be four three five. I don't I don't remember. Um, but great combine from McConkey. Looked great in the gauntlet. Um, four three nine. Oh, four three nine. Yeah. That, okay. That's I, I, I apologize. Thinking. I apologize. Four. Th he was in the four threes. I was happy to see right. that. But size, speed wise, very similar to to you know you can look up the metrics of what he did at the combine versus what Garrett Wilson did at the combine, and the physical stature is identical. Um, and you watch six the, foot one eighty six. You watch the gauntlet drill, and it's just you know that you want to see how guys catch. The gauntlet drill, I think, is probably far more important than the 40-yard dash because they're actually doing a little bit of football. And it's just like thoughtless, easy grab and release this ball it, it, as he's running full speed. He he just looks so fluid as an athlete. I, uh, I, I give Andy full credit on being first to the Lad McConkey party. But I am I am a believer. Yeah, I welcomed you in the door a long time ago. Uh Garrett Wilson was a four three eight, McConkie was a four three nine. So um it, it's it's neat to see. I think if he goes to the right situation. That that's worth saying. Like before we get to Mike's takeaway, yeah, like this is an exciting time to watch these players on display, all of the hype around the draft. But these these players don't have teams yet. And I just want to stress how significant the landing spots and draft capital are going to be and how significant our changes will be in terms of the rookie rankings and in terms of where we think these players are going to um, contribute for fantasy, it's going to change so much based on, you know, we've been talking about the running back room. There's five to six running backs right now where legitimately at least, at least four or five that could go first running back overall. Uh, the destination is going to matter tremendously. Whether these guys are third round or later picks, or do they? Does somebody sneak into the second round? You know, those are going to make big differences, and we'll be reacting and modifying so you can do the same. Mike, what, your takeaway it was for me: it selfishly is Trey Benson related, uh, running back that uh, we've shared on this show that we like this guy, and he was kind of the I had watched uh, Corum and Jonathan Brooks like. They're fine prospects, and I know there's, you know, out in mock drafts like Jonathan Brooks. Uh, it seemed you know, he was unfortunately tore his ACL, so he's recovering from that from from last season. But Jonathan Brooks is like this, uh, a lot of people's number one running back, and people love Blake Corm out of Michigan. And I watched them both. I'm like, you know, they're good players. I think they'll make an impact. And then Trey Benson's tape immediately to me was, this is now this is a player I can get behind of of falling in love with the guy's speed is great he looks like he's a, a good sized running back as well and has a good production profile and then he weighed in at six foot 216 and he ran a 439 yeah baby so i mean that is a for that size that is incredibly fast so it was it was it was exciting to see a player you were already falling in love with and it's kind of like lab mcconkey of their, Deliver their, on their, the, their stock the went up after the combine. We, we still got to see what happens with the draft, but they are now on the ascension. So it's it's always fun to see that happen uh, with these players. Well, speaking of Benson and Corum and all the the running backs, we're, we've got a free agency prediction show today, uh, which really is a running back free agent prediction show mm -hmm. in a lot of ways because I've got news I'm going to talk about in a minute. Closing the door on another free agent wide receiver 
uh, in their opportunity to hit the market. But it'll be interesting whether the teams that were predicting to land these free agent running backs go with the rookie or they go with one of these available free agents. Uh, you know, we, we, we can talk about Blake Corum and Jim Harbaugh <laughs> and yeah. whether that comes together and whether, you know, a team like the Ravens decides to go with a free agent running back or they finally, you know, go back to the draft after losing J.K. Dobbins and and going through retreads, like do they do they finally go in on a guy like whatever, Trey Benson or somebody? So that is coming up momentarily, uh, but quickly some news for you. News and notes from around the league. Well, somebody got paid. Uh, Mike Evans and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finally reached an agreement. Two years, $52 million, $35 million guaranteed. Locks Mike Evans for year 31, year 32 in Tampa. It's a lot of money. It should be encouraging to those of you that have Mike Evans in yeah. a dynasty league. You're going to get at least another, I think, high highly productive year you know 35 million dollars guaranteed in this deal and then he'll probably have a, a decent year the following season so quarterback not situated in tampa right now but mike evans is coming off one of his statistically best seasons ever and um i think tampa might have lost some money not paying him last year yeah i mean he just needed to get rid of that tom brady guy <laughs> So you could go out there and score some touchdowns, am I right? That is, it is funny because it's like, obviously there were meetings last year, and Mike Evans and and the Buccaneers didn't come together, and Mike Evans is like, no, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go play, and then they're like, you, you know, you don't have Brady, right? Yeah, and he's like, no, I'm gonna go play, and then it, it you know, he's just that good. Is he so good that he cost them money on Baker too? Like did Mike yes. Mike Evans yeah. made Baker look great again, and then it's like okay, now you got to pay hey, him. I too. don't think Mike Evans signs this deal with with Tampa Bay without the assurances that Baker's back. I I genuinely believe that. Okay. I I think Baker will be back. That is just an assumption. Mike Evans got the PR team out this weekend and was like, "I'm not playing for anybody but an elite quarterback," and then comes back to Tampa Bay 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. It certainly would help baker to come back like imagine being baker where you're you're like i have i have resurrected my career from the ashes and the bucks like well come on back you're not we're not gonna have mike evans but you should come back here be like, eh, no well, thank you and, and they got trey palmer and trey palmer had yeah. one of the more productive rookie seasons that's kind of under the radar for uh for fantasy players and you know pretty good situation there another piece of news we were just talking about this Tight end on the Saturday live draft. Darren Waller is, quote, still undecided on whether or not he will continue to play or will opt to retire. Hmm. <laughs> well, I hope you play, Darren Waller, because I drafted you. Uh, it, it's 32 just, years old, I believe. Yeah, is I that think where we are? It's just good to, to know if you are doing drafts right now um, that he's TBD. Still under contract for three more years. He is uh, not yet 32. He's 31.5. Do, do Have you transitioned to your own age now being in the point and the, the month? Uh, oh, I should. haven't because I'm not a superstar athlete. Oh, okay. Because I'm sitting at 39. Right. Point. Yeah, but you want to. 11. It's better for you to just be like 39. That's right. That's it's just right. a mystery. When, mm. when are you 40? And you're like, well, it's actually real soon. And you'd be like, where are you at now? 41. Okay, just making sure. Point zero. Yeah. <laughs> Point zero, because your birthday was I'd rather be 41.0 than 39.9. 39. Brooksy, do we have any other news? Papa Josh, you got well, anything for us? there was. It, it's not necessarily the most fantasy-related news. It, I mean, it could be with the tush push, but Jason Kelsey of the Philadelphia Eagles did officially announce his retirement. A beloved character among the NFL. I mean, just a very it, watching what he's going to do now will be very fun because I think that the, the job opportunities for for Jason Kelsey are going to be just flying in the door. Yeah, yeah. I I this weekend was the first time I had heard a rumor of him going to Kansas City to play with his brother. 
I don't think it's happening. And he's now retired. <laughs> but the that idea really did spark the imagination. The but they've they've taken over the world already, and yeah. he, he's going to keep that yeah, le- doing legacy right. in Philadelphia. Um, okay, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with our free agency predictions. Should be a lot of fun watching where uh, some big names land this off season. All right, before we jump in, uh, did I? It's thirty one point five, right? Like that is the age for Mike Evans. Okay. So translate that. Thirty one and a half. So then that's six months. That's six month mark. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. There's no. There's no point. Point eleven. 11. Yeah, it's point. It's percentage. Exactly. Correct. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> now we can move on. Free agent frenzy. All right. Uh, by the way, apparently I was the uh, the champion of the free agent predictions last year. You did it. Which equated to, I, I did look this up, it equated to three correct free agent predictions. It's pretty hard to to nail these. I think if, we, if we're wanting to go for just um, the highest score, we should just predict them to go back to their team. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm, I'm going for glory. I'm I want glory. really, really happy for running backs this year. Because the universe is lined up very nicely, we're 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 going to go through these positions, and there are a lot of running back free agents of note, and there are no wide receiver, virtually very few, notable wide receiver free agents. But the draft class this year is chock full of nonstop, high end, uh, highly rated wide receiver prospects, and not a ton of people excited about running backs. So it's like the first time in as long as I can remember, that I feel like maybe running backs actually have a market in free agency from NFL teams, and they're not just going to go, eh, I'm just going to draft a, a rookie and, and be cheap. Some of these guys might actually get paid this year. I can preview our uh, our mock draft that we're going through post-combine, and nine of the 12 picks are wide receivers in yeah. the first round. So to, to your point, I'm uh, Either of you guys want to talk briefly about some of the lingo and the language around the cap? Sure, I'll I'll jump in just a, a couple of uh, vocab words if you're not familiar. Uh, things like cap hit, which a player's cap hit is not necessarily how much they're being paid that year, but how much they will count against the salary cap, and that's more of a complicated thing of of your your bonus structure, how much you're paid per game, and so there's there's a formula to figure all that out. Dead money is when a team has moved on from a player or that it, uh, but they had some guaranteed money that's left on the contract. So it hurts. It's, it's, it's still against the yeah, cap. Yeah. Because of that formula I talked about with the cap hit of you can't just give a player a gigantic signing bonus and then be like, no, you don't get to count against the cap next year. Just the way that the, all the deals are structured. And then some uh, important dates of note. Uh, today is the franchise tag deadline, so there could be some news that we unfortunately miss with that. Next Monday is the legal tampering, the the worst named thing of all time. Uh, it's teams are permitted to enter contract negotiations with free agents. Whenever but, I hear that, if, if it reminds me of that movie, the movie The Purge, it's like you just legal, get, it's cause, you just get like a certain amount of time right. to do something. There are no rules. They do something illegal for because tampering by definition is like a right. Wrong, it's like a wrong thing to do. Yeah, just say contract negotiations open. Right. So they they are able to talk to players. Oftentimes they, they get announcements, but the pin is into the paper. Negotiating right. window. Like yes. that's that's yeah. I don't, that's what it should be called. It's just a free agency it's negotiating weird. window. Yeah. Legal tampering. And then. Wednesday the 13th, so next Wednesday, that is when the league year opens for 2024. Free agency begins. People will start signing contracts. All these dudes will be making tons of cash. We will be recording next Tuesday's episode that morning so that we have all the information possible from the negotiating window. Right. And uh, and so we'll jump in. We'll talk about some of the deals that have already been reached. We'll start hearing about them on Monday. And uh, just another thing before we jump into our predictions, which are mostly running backs, um, the cap space situation right now, I just wanted to read the teams with the most cap space in the NFL. The commanders are number one with $96 million. 
Uh, the Patriots at 91 million, Titans at 80 million, Bears at 79, Colts at 73, Texans at 70, then the Lions with 54 million in cap space. That's kind of it's impressive. Yeah, I mean, when you think about um, these are not playoff teams. Houston was, Detroit was, Cincinnati at 52 million, the Cardinals at 51, and the Raiders at 47. So those are the only two playoff teams, right? Did the Colts? Uh, the oh, Colts. I think they had like the they missed out. Yeah, it was it was uh, them versus the Texans for the, the final spot. week for the playoffs. So yeah, but three three competitive teams last year with uh, with lots of space. We will we'll go to the quarterback position. It may be for but a minute. But the two names now that we'll make predictions for Kirk Cousins are any of us detouring from him returning to Minnesota. I, I went through the league to look at, like, who would go after – in my opinion, all these teams should be trying to sign Kirk, Kirk I think Cousins. a lot of people are going to. Um, but it just seems like the teams that are clear and obviously in need of a quarterback, they're at the top of the draft and able to acquire one. You know, the so at that point you go, okay, what teams are left? And I, I do think he returns to the Vikings – it, the Vikings don't want to lose him. They don't have another good option if if he goes elsewhere. He has roots there now, uh, likes the franchise, has great weapons. Jefferson about to sign a $30 million per season type of deal. Oof. Yeah, so um, for me, I you know, the like I, if I was the Falcons, I would go so hard after Kirk Cousins. That's where – that's – like I, that's what I would do. But they keep talking about they want youth, they want someone young. They have just Inf them. inferior, right? It's like what? <laughs> it's, what is? How is younger better if the player's worse? Washington came up this weekend, which obviously Kirk Cousins was in Washington before. Um, but we all have Minnesota down as the destination. Is that the summary? Yeah, but it it's going to be wild. And then Baker Mayfield, uh, the resurgent season. Gets Mike Evans back in Tampa. Jason and I both have Tampa as the as the destination. Mike, are you trying to be spicy here? Uh, it's still a little bit. I'm just uh, I more wanted to bring up because I put down the Falcons for Baker Mayfield. Um, the the Mike Evans signing uh, probably points to that Baker will be back. But I just wanted to briefly talk about so Caleb Williams, the presumed overall number one pick by the Chicago Bears or whoever has the number one pick, did not. Uh, he didn't do anything at the combine, and in that was he didn't do medical testing for in for anyone at the combine, and he will he will do that on an individual basis of teams as they can make their certain allotment of of individual visits, and I thought that was interesting. Of well, now at this point with free agency opening up next week, like the Falcons were a there, there was a, a pretty hot tweet that came out that said it's. It's basically done. Of Justin Fields traded to the Atlanta Falcons, can like can the Bears really do that right now? If you haven't done a full medical testing on Caleb Williams, like you can't trade away who the guy who right now is your franchise QB for a player that what if just what if what if some crazy red flag popped up in, in Caleb's medicals and you had already traded away your quarterback? So just trying to do all those puzzle that pieces. That does make sense, Mike. I, I hadn't thought about that at all with the medical. So and, it, and the, the pieces of that being, well, Atlanta then can't trade for him. But if like if you're gonna go get someone like Baker, you just you have to do it. You have to do it next week. So it was just to, more just to bring up the scenario of like there the stuff with Kirk Cousins and Baker is wild. And now I think it's it is kind of getting some ripple effect of Teams don't know for sure that Caleb Williams is 100% good to go. One of the reasons the free agent predictions and the draft predictions are so difficult is because there is that cascading mm -hmm. effect of getting one wrong. You get one person right. in yep. one place wrong, and it trickles yep. down to all the others so often. So let's turn to the, the, the priority predictions here, which is the running back position because we have significant big names. Um, Saquon. Jacobs, Henry, Eckler, Pollard, Swift. Those are the six that we're going to predict here. Uh, but before There's so many more, too. There, there really are. I mean, you have Dobbins coming off the ACL, yep. who's a free agent. Antonio Gibson yep. finding a new home. Singletary, who was effective. Zach Moss, who had a 
Yeah. Great start to the year. Yeah, the, there are some names Alexander out there. Alexander Madison's out there, guys. <laughs> Zeke. <laughs> I mean, Madison hitting the waiver wire, do you know what he's thinking when he sees this list? It's time to get paid. He's like, can I switch positions? <laughs> um, the teams with the highest vacated opportunities going into the upcoming year at running back. Uh, the number one is Dallas. 76% of the running back carries available. Um, the Giants at 66%. I mean, these are it's basically the, the same it's, teams. It's the teams that have these free agents leaving. All these big names. Um, you know, they're not under contract right now. Jacobs so. and the, and the, the Raiders, the Titans. And then an uh, interesting one is the Texans just because Singletary is a free agent. And I don't know if, I don't know if they're, they have a lot of cap space and they should be circling for a great running back. So I think that they, they may find one. Um, and the Eagles. So the Eagles have nobody under contract pretty much. Uh, I they, think Gainwell's they, there for one more year. Is he? I think so. Let me, I'll, I'll double check that. I yeah. One more for Gainwell. And yep. then they did the, uh, Ty Davis Price or whatever. Yeah. They, <laughs> so let's start yep. with Saquon Barkley. Spent his entire career in New York. They're not franchise tagging him. He came back on the franchise tag last year. He was productive. Uh, the team struggled. Quarterback injuries, rotating quarterback situation. Uh, still ended up with three games missed as the number 12 fantasy running back. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, he's 3.9 a carry, six touchdowns. Caught 41 passes. He was uh, solid with occasional spectacular games, but is older. I mean, uh, he's he's getting up there. He's probably going to get paid this offseason, so where's he going? I ha I want him to leave so bad. I want to see him on a good offense. I want to see him with a good quarterback, with an offensive line. Like I want to see him be able to succeed because what he did last year was masterful, given what he had to do. Do it behind. You're <laughs> saying this the, the sliding scale here, when you look at all the things opposing him in New York, he still was productive. Yes, exactly. And so I might just be trying to wish this into existence, but I think it would be a perfect fit for the Dallas Cowboys to upgrade from Pollard, upgrade, I think, even from, you know, late career Zeke and allow a pass catcher who can be a goal line guy, who can be uh, a bell cow uh, back, I want him to go to Dallas, have a quarterback. Yeah, that would be so wonderful. It would and be I very if, exciting if that happened. He would be um, an easy first round pick. Mike and I, we took the boring route. Well, I, I or are you pivoting? No, no, no. I put in the Giants. Now right. you put New York. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know. He's got the Jets. I don't know if he was just trying to hedge and get two teams. Just in case. Now I see how he won last year. <laughs> Brees Hall, get out yeah. of here. Uh, he's Los, going to California. He's going to Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Western United <laughs> States. Um, no, I'm, I'm taking the Giants. Yeah. You and I both think he'll come to an agreement. I think this is very, very much like the Mike Evans situation, just that running back. Uh, Saquon is a team identity type of player. I don't think he really wants to leave, so I think they can figure something yep, out. Yep, I have him coming back. We have three teams predicted for this next player, all different. So let's turn to it. The uh, One of the younger options on the free agent market, second youngest of the names I mentioned, Josh Jacobs, 26.1 years old. And I am going to go with the Chicago Bears. It, it makes sense. Uh, the Chicago Bears, I think, will do everything they can. This offseason, you'll see it in the rest of the predictions, to equip Caleb Williams for the most success he could possibly have. They're a competitive team with a good defense. They need a running game to take the pressure off. They have the fourth most cap space. And I think uh, Josh Jacobs is, I think in a lot of GM's minds, he's going to be the cream of the crop of this entire group. When you have the age combination with his ability to uh, be effective in the passing game, between the tackles, what he did two years ago leading the league in rushing, I'm going to go with the Chicago Bears. It's it's almost a twofer of should you trade Justin Fields, reset your rookie contract at the quarterback position that and you have all that cast space, okay, we can we can pay a premier running back for 3 to 4 years because it balances off with the quarterback. So it it does it it makes logical sense to me. 
Yeah, and I would I would love to see it too. I think that would be um, a really fun destination, much better than where I've got him going. But another team with a ton of cap space. I have that, seen this rumored that needs offensive weapons and has a new head coach that wants to run the ball, wants to establish it. And so I've got him going to the New England Patriots uh, at oh, 26 man. years old. Yeah, all would, the Ramondre managers just dying yeah. on the inside. Mm -hmm. That would that would be brutal for Ramondre. He would clearly usurp him in the pecking order, and it would be kind of brutal for Josh Jacobs because Ramondre would not go away. It would probably be a, a you know a, a 45, 55 split. 55! I think that would be brutal for for Jacobs. Most landing spots for running backs, they're someone's party's getting ruined. All right, so what party are you ruining? I'm uh, going to the Buffalo Bills. Oh, you're ruining James <laughs> Cook's party. They and I have I don't think I've seen this rumored anywhere. It's to me is just the Buffalo Bills for so long now keep getting linked to high profile running backs. And as good as James Cook was, they still wanted other guys involved. Like they wanted, you know, a bigger body guy of we want uh, uh, Latavius Murray's getting goal line carries. They brought in Leonard Fournette to not really use him, but they still brought him in because they were, they were hopeful. And I don't know what the cap space is. I don't know if they, they can... have the least cap room yeah. in the league. Yeah. I don't, look, teams can figure things out and just say, I, one of these guys would not shock me at all. If he ends up with, with, uh, up there in Buffalo as they want, they seem to want this. Derrick Henry, the Yeti. Uh, why don't you guys go first? You yeah. have a, the same destination. Well, this is this one's uh, this one's selfish, guys. <laughs> I got, I trade. I had to make the trade for Derrick Henry last year in the dynasty uh, in league to make my run. It worked out. Knowing that trade for Derrick Henry is truly playing with fire for any future purposes as he is over 30 years old he's a free agent so i am sending him to baltimore i'm wheeling it into existence for touchdown upside i i, I think it makes sense for both sides it, it is i believe it's also spot. like the favorite it's been rumored there was you know uh, trade rumors um at the in towards the trade deadline last year i think it makes sense for all parties and our champ 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 team <laughs> Could, that's that seems could to also yes. use it. Yeah, it makes too much sense for you guys. I'm not yeah. going to Baltimore. I, I think, love where you. Play. I don't think Henry's going to Baltimore. I think he's going to a different team that also had trade deadline rumors around the running back. A perfect bell cow for the change of pace. Kenneth Gainwell. It is Derrick Henry to Philadelphia. It is the most Philadelphia type of move I think that they could make. Gonna need the tush push to slow down you know henry henry to philly will bring some question marks around the goal line i think could you imagine henry helping to push <laughs> no he would he <laughs> would help push now he's done it first and ten tush push got, first like, down got a question here if jalen hurts is lifted into the air mm -hmm. and never actually comes down in bounds yeah is it still a touchdown absolutely it is cross the plane it's just never been done <laughs> from from the front out the back of the end. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I hear the full you. end zone. You're they, saying he crosses the goal line in the air and then yes. flies through the back of the end zone. Yeah, perhaps through the uprights. Perhaps. So I'll go Philly. I'm not going to rule it I'm gonna, out. I'm going to go Philadelphia a little different than you guys on that one. Okay. Um, not sure about the upright thing, but otherwise that's my prediction. This one. All right. Austin Eckler. Not yet 29 years old, difficult, yeah. uh, injured year, no quarterback, not the kind of display he wanted to put out on film for free agency. So uh, we have three destinations, Mike. Let's start with you. I'm going boring. Uh, I'm going with him back to the Los Angeles Chargers on a – and they – I mean, they have a cap problem, but I think that this is a – Eckler's – where he like where he's played his entire career, give me a one year prove it deal, and then I'll go get my money. I'll try to go get my money afterwards. Uh, I just it's it's hard to see the the market being really hot for Eckler. Unfortunately, I I'm going to uh, I'm going to go with a team. This is the one that I have the most kind of like secret confidence about. Oh really? Ooh. Wow. Um, it's not a secret anymore. 
I think Austin Eckler ends up maybe a similar scenario like you just said where he, he doesn't find a big market. I think he becomes the new Saman J.P. Ryan in Denver. We know that Peyton wants to run the football, and I think Austin Eckler is a perfect fit there to be uh, part of a run-centric offense in Denver. So I think they find a way. A running back-centric one for sure. I, I think they find a way to to get Austin Eckler in, in my high city. That would be very interesting. I, I agree with Mike's assertion that the the market will not be there for him. Uh, you know, there's only going to be a couple of teams that are willing to go out and spend a big bag on a free agent running back, and Eckler's just not at the top of the list. But I think he is still really valuable to a quarterback, to to sure. being able to dump off the passes, uh, pass protect. I think he is a quarterback's best friend at running back. And that's the type of player that I could see the Houston Texans going after and finding someone for C.J. Stroud to just help take the offense to the next level. Uh, Devin Singletary is a free agent. I think, you know, look, Devin Singletary played very well. But, you know, Eckler is an upgrade from Devin Singletary, and I think that'll help the offense. They got the money to do it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll kick off the next one just because I have that destination for uh, this next gentleman. Tony Pollard, uh, a little bit younger, going to be – probably more expensive could be a one-year deal I have them going to Houston where you just had uh Austin Eckler going they've got so much cap space I think they're going to be able to pay up for Tony Pollard and so that is my destination for him yeah that where do you got Pollard going? makes complete sense um I see what you did Jason. you see what I what I did having him go to the Giants he has already replaced uh Ezekiel Elliott once now I have him replacing Saquon Barkley now is does Pollard get on the plane right after Barkley like it arrives or is it the other way around? I, I think it, it will be do, after. Or do they high five in midair? <laughs> no, it'll it'll be after. All right, I'm going Eagles. Uh, we, we've kind of laid out their situation, but they're going to need some help at running back. And Tony Pollard, if he is actually healthy and can get back to really explosive Tony Pollard, he would fit the scheme. All right, last one we'll predict at running back uh, before our next break. DeAndre Swift, just 25 years old. He looked really good at times in Philadelphia. He His was, season's weird. He was set up in the most uh, opposite of Saquon kind of way, mm -hmm. you know, where he took advantage of a great offensive line, great situation with the quarterback and the read option. 47% of DeAndre Swift's yardage came before contact. Yeah. Yeah, 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 highest yeah. among all running backs. Which is why I'm putting him in Washington to become the next Antonio Gibson in Washington. <laughs> it seems too perfect to me. Washington has cap space, and I think they will they'll add a body after losing Gibson. You guys have had the Eagles signing a running back because they they will need one. Um, the Eagles just don't spend up at the position. I don't think DeAndre Swift's going to cost a lot, so I've got him returning to the Eagles. Yeah, I have Swift probably not costing a lot too, and I'm going to send him to the Kansas City Chiefs, where Clyde Edwards-Alaire will be gone. I don't know. I don't know McKinnon's contract status. It, it, I believe they. I, I think he was just a one, a one year. year, and it was like they waited a really long time. If, they waited until after the draft. They're like, yeah. oh, can we get our I guy? Felt nope. So bad for him at the Super Bowl because it seemed like he was working so hard to get back. Yeah, and just it wouldn't work out. But Swift as that second option behind Pacheco, not costing him very much. It, it will be helpful. The, the Chiefs are an interesting destination because they do right now that both those guys are gone. It's just Pacheco yeah. on the roster. Yeah. Who's been banged up many times. All right. Quick break. Back with some more. And just to recap the uh, the other running backs that will be available, no predictions here, but Dobbins, uh, Gus Bus is gone, Gibson, Singletary, Zeke out there, Moss, uh, A.J. Dillon finding a new home. Clyde. Clyde finding a home. And Kareem Hunt's out there. Cam Akers. Off of a, what a second Achilles? Oh gosh! Yeah, that. But man, Antonio Gibson, just be a be a fun location. <laughs> just be a be a fun place. Well, the Chiefs would be perfect for that because as a pass catcher Dude, in doing the Gibson McKinnon could, role, could if, be amazing. If Gibson man. goes yeah. to the Chiefs, I will be so happy. Oh, snip, <laughs> snap, snip, snap, <laughs> snip. All right, the wide receivers. Look, we, we've got franchise tags and contracts now. T Higgins. Franchise tag back to Cincinnati was going to be one of the uh, the jewels of the wide receiver free agent pool. Mike Evans. Contract. Contract. 
So Michael Pittman, we he's going to have a contract yeah, or a we, franchise. This tag. is not really a prediction. We all have the Colts. Well, I I imagine by the time you're hearing the show, he will have been franchise tag or extended. So, um, I might throw another name or two out there for you to just improv okay. a destination right. for fun. But the two that we'll focus on to begin. Hollywood Brown, who is still not yet 27 years old, pretty much non-existent last year. The scheme in Arizona did not work. They did not have Kyler Murray for part of the year, and he was just not a part of the offense under uh, the new offensive regime. Where do you have Hollywood Brown landing this offseason? Uh, he's going to need to go to a team that has a scheme that he likes. He wanted out of Baltimore because they didn't throw it enough. Uh, the Steichen speed. And the cap space that the Colts have, I think, equipping uh, the young quarterback with another wide receiver, I've got him going to Indy. All right. And I have him going to the Atlanta Falcons to join Drake London, put some serious speed over there. And their depth chart, uh, I mean, is, as long as what I'm looking at is accurate, I'm looking at our lads. We have under Rust or under contract, we have Drake London, we have Josh Ali, Chris Blair, and, and, uh, and Austin Mack. I believe that's so they have Drake London under contract, yeah, huh? So they're they're gonna have to make a splash here, and and if they and we'll see. That like, does Hollywood still have it? I don't know. He was he was hurt. He was the whole, very hurt. He was hurt yes. the whole year. Um, I think he takes the biggest bag, and I think it comes from Carolina. I think Hollywood <laughs> Hollywood just finds the biggest bag, and oh, I think Carolina is the one that's gonna have to write that check to to kind of promise somebody to. You know, come and give Bryce Young a try. So uh, that's that's where I'm going. Calvin Ridley as well. I mean, the rumors to me, I think Calvin Ridley gets paid pretty handsomely. I'm going to say that. I think he. I don't think there are doubts in the general manager universe about Calvin Ridley the way that they there might be in the fantasy community with how up and down he was. I think he goes to the team with the fourth most cap space that I already had making a splash. I think they make another one. Oh my goodness. And they equip Caleb Williams. I've got Calvin Ridley to the bears opposite of DJ Moore <laughs> and probably Rome. Probably. Well, possibly. Yeah. Unless they go, I don't know, offensive, offensive line, line or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, to, <laughs> if a team could actually do that, have, have gotten DJ Moore, who is a wide receiver one, in my opinion, Calvin Ridley, uh, it could be, and then someone you drafting who you're drafting that this person could be a wide receiver one to start a rookie with that with those three weapons would be that would be just like a really special situation to watch unlock. Yeah, and uh, similar to you, Andy, you paired uh, your running back destination with Calvin Ridley, having both go to the Bears. I'm pairing Calvin Ridley with my Josh Jacobs. Uh, oh, that destination was, for that's the Patriots. Exactly, so didn't I put Jacobs to the Bears? Yeah, yeah. So we both did the that's, same thing. Yep, we just got different teams. Yeah, and you went Patriots. Yeah, I'm so sending Ridley him to, to the Patriots with uh, insert quarterback here, right? Yep, I'm putting him on the Titans. They yeah, just, they just, shoot, <laughs> they need help. <laughs> they got tons of money, right? They, they do. Yeah. Do they? Okay, good. Because Calvin Ridley, third most. The way you were talking about Hollywood Brown of yeah, think, take the bag. I think he's gonna go get a bag of money. I think Calvin Ridley's going to go get himself a bag of money. I, I agree. And the only the other name I wanted to throw out there in case you want to just is top of head. How about this? Uh, okay. Gabe Davis, because age-wise, could be Man. an attractive name now that some of these other big names have been picked up. You know, I'm not really, you know, worried about projecting the Beckham, Curtis Samuel, Noah Brown destinations. But Gabe Davis... I don't know. So it's, it's fun to think about. Yeah. So obviously both of these won't come true, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Colts here because they've got a quarterback. You putting everyone on the Colts? I, I, I could see. I, I think the Colts are gonna go after a wide receiver for Anthony Richardson, um, and whether that's paying up top of the market for Marquise Brown or whether that's going and getting a guy that they see was helpful for Josh Allen. You know, the similar archetype of quarterback. So, obviously, they're not going to sign both guys, but I think either one of them could go to the Colts. That would be my top of the head. I'll go Houston for Gabe Davis. Ooh, that'd be nice. Deep threat. Yeah. Wonder not scare off 
too many fantasy managers from Tank Dell and Nico. I wonder if you wouldn't be freaked out, would you, if he went there? Go to Houston? No, no. Yeah, see. But well, what would you think of him? What would not you, not much? Yeah, no. no. It would be he would help Stroud. I be I think good yes. things. Of but Stroud. like Noah Brown, exactly had exactly monst- you know some monstrous performances. Yeah, just just you didn't know when. Best what? ball. Yeah, <laughs> best ball. Hey. Gabe Davis. Uh, what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys wide receiver situation? They've got CD Lamb. They're okay. I'm I'm aware <laughs> I'm aware they have CD Lamb, but like they so. Is Brandon Cooks Brandon, under contract? Brandon Cooks is under contract. He will be a hundred years old. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sure. Uh, he would be a ten million dollar cap hit should they keep him, and six million dead cap if they were to cut him. I saw a lot of rumors floating around of uh, Michael Gallup maybe getting cut after that contract extension that they had just given him uh, a couple years. Or that looks a couple like a years huge back. Huge flop right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. Kyle, do you know what the the dead cap would be for that? It, is that just it people? would be thirteen million? It's not happening this year. Okay, so uh, maybe maybe not Dallas. Cool. You, so your prediction is not Dallas. Eh. Is that where you no, think? No, Gabe I'll, no, I'll still go with it. But okay. you, you can go Kansas City. I think that one's interesting. Can I go AFC? Uh, for no credit, yes. All right, I'll take right. it. <laughs> Oh, I'll take it. All right, and then Dalton Schultz, we he's the only tight end that, that we're predicting here, but we all have him going back to the Texans. Yeah, boring. Yeah, yeah, I hope he does. I mean, he was he was good there, and if he doesn't, then they need to go sign Hunter Henry or, you know, I, I want them to have a, a good pass-catching tight end there. Dalton should go back to Dallas. <laughs> Ferguson, no, get out of here. <laughs> Do um, that to Ferguson. All right. Well, next Monday – the legal tampering period, the purge begins, and then uh, Wednesday, the new league year, and it's time. It, it, it'll be time to find out whether that dynasty player you're rostering, if it's one of these running backs, lands in a great place. I feel good about the Mike Evans deal. Maybe you'll end up with a situation like that, or maybe you'll end up with the Ramondre getting squashed by another running back or, or something like that, or, you know, how, how do you feel about a guy like DJ Moore if if Calvin Ridley landed in Chicago, does that concern you at all with a rookie quarterback coming in and maybe they right. they draft like if they legitimately drafted Roma Dunze and signed Calvin Ridley, your DJ Moore enthusiasm might be yeah. stifled. It will it would be. It would so, so it'll be it'll be a very interesting off season. I can't believe we're already near the free agent period. It's it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, we've got uh what do we got coming up on Thursday, gentlemen? We got a fun game time episode. Ooh. Game time episode. I like games. Wait, so we got multiple games we're playing on Thursday. Yeah, we're so many games. Got some who am I, some gut feelings, and some oh. liar liar. We got a liar liar. Now That's are fun. you are you wearing like kind of like a game show host type of outfit for Thursday? I would never. Okay. Oh, oh man. Well, I wanted to see him in his wedding suit. I thought maybe we could I mean you 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 got a fitted suit, right? I do. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean Chance to use it. Permission granted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then free encouraged. Yeah, encouraged. Is it required though? Uh, uh, permission required. Wait, <laughs> wait. Permission required. <laughs> I like it. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll be back very soon for that game time episode. Yeah, it's required now. <laughs> Full suit. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.